Hey cruisers, welcome to our Alaska live stream. We're doing it again. Today we're going to talk all about cruising to the 49th state in the US. We'll talk about ports, weather, excursions, and so much more. And I'm very proud to share once again that today's live stream is sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can find photos, tips, and verified reviews from real everyday cruisers. We will of course link to cruiseline.com in our notes below so that you can check out their site when you're researching your next cruise to Alaska and beyond. So if this is your first live stream with us, we wanna tell you a little bit about how things work. You can leave your questions and comments in the live stream chat. However, they will not save. So I'm going to be repeating some of your questions back for our replay so that people in the future, when they wanna learn about Alaska, they can learn from the questions that you have asked. So that is um, something that will be happening. We wanna ask you to please keep your questions relatively short, and if you can, keep them Alaska focused today so that we can stay on topic and you know, share a bunch of knowledge. We're really excited about this. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to be talking about some Alaska tips. We're going to answer your live questions and we're going to ask you a lot of questions. So the first question that I want to ask you guys is, do you have an Alaska cruise planned? And if so, tell us a little bit about it in the comments. Now, I'm going to take a look over here at my screen because I want to see who's here and say hello to you guys. So if I lose eye contact, I'm just looking over at the live chat. I see a lot of familiar faces here today. We have Pete and Bonnie and CK104, Brandy, Becky, Melanie, Sharon C. Oh, Sharon, you did make it. Good job. Um, Starry Skies, Emma, LaShawn Parrish, Ray Hunter Music, Kim Wayman, Jen Eric Jen, Nancy Lucas. My goodness, there's so many of you. Cheryl from New Orleans, Matt. Slasher. Let's see who else do we have here. We have Mary Garza, uh, Melanie McIntyre, Eric John. Slasher, you have a question. Great. Go. You can shoot it now or you can wait a little bit longer until we get to that particular segment, okay? Um, let's see. We've got Zachary. Hey, Zachary. Woohoo. You did make it. <laughs> um, Kimberly Ashman, Brandy Sawyer, Becky. Let's see. Becky's going on NCL Pearl in August. Let's see where some of you guys are going. We have, let's see. Becky's going July Princess Land and Sea for the anniversary. Happy anniversary. Nancy's doing Norwegian Jewel this September. That is such an awesome awesome ship. We love Norwegian Jewel. The renovations that they did on that ship are so cool. It's really modern. The photo gallery is super cool how it's all computerized now. You're going to love that one. Um, let's see here. We have, oh, we've got Tia going on the Splendor today. Bon voyage, Tia. That sounds wonderful. Hi, Max and Sarah from the UK. Great to see you guys. Glad you made it. Um, all right. So what we want to do, you guys, is while you're leaving your um, your Alaska voyages in the comments below. I want to ask you one more question. For those of you that do not have an Alaska cruise planned, what comes to mind when you think of an Alaskan cruise? And in the meantime, I would like to give you some of my favorite tips on cruising to Alaska. We're going to give you top five really, really quick tips here. Are you ready, honey? We're going to try to do something new today and give you guys a little slideshow overlay. So here we go. Here are my top five very, very quick tips for Alaska. Number one, we love to mount a map of our journey with magnets on our stateroom walls. It's a really great way to see the Alaskan passage. We like a good travel size set of binoculars. We love to book a balcony if you can afford it. Sometimes we can't, but when we can, we love to so we can see the world passing by. Also, you want to save some extra money for Alaska, guys. It is expensive to do excursions there, so save ahead, get prepared. And last but not least, you know that glacier day that everyone loves? Our secret tip for you is to stay on deck after the glacier viewing, when everybody goes back inside, grabs a hot cocoa, you are gonna see some of the most beautiful sights that you have ever seen. So that's a little, little quick tip power round there. It was our first time trying that technology where we overlaid the photos while we were doing this, so hopefully it worked okay. Uh, did it look like it was working okay for you over there in the cockpit? Okay, sounds good. So let's see what comes to mind when you think of Alaska. I wanna hear what you guys have to say about this, but so many of you have Alaskan cruises planned. It looks really great. When I think of Alaska, I think of course of you know glaciers and bears and things like that, but the things that really stick with me are the, the cold, beautiful silence of pulling into a glacial passage in the early morning hours. I love to go out on deck 
when it's you know 6 a.m. and there's nobody else around and I like to just soak up the complete silence and the natural beauty and that's what I always think about when I think of Alaska I get a little as soon as I even get a little bit emotional thinking about it because it's so overpowering when you go to Alaska everything seems so grand and beautiful and it's just it's incredibly special so let's see what you all have to say all right we have lots of questions coming in so I think we're gonna have to kind of get to those as we go into um, all of the different sections over the next hour. Um, let's see here. Melanie said, love the map idea. Where do you get one of the inside passage? Melanie, what we're going to do is we're gonna find a map for you of the inside passage. And once this goes to replay, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the comments below for you, okay? Um, we'll link to one in our Amazon Marketplace for you. The one that I had on, in that photo on the wall came out of some kind of a cool Alaska guidebook that I bought, so the map was part of it. But we'll find one for you and link to it, okay? Bonnie Bergstein said, when she thinks of Alaska, she thinks God's country. Completely agree. Totally agree with you. That's so true. Uh, Ray Hunter Music wants to see the whales. Yes, absolutely. I know, right? That's a key. I think a lot of people have been very lucky with that lately, too, I'm hearing. Not even necessarily going on a whale watching excursion, but just checking out the whales in general right off the boat. So that is... Um, that is definitely true. We have a question here that I think I want to answer right now. Jeannie's channel is asking, when is the best time to cruise to Alaska? Jeannie, that's such a good question. And one of our loyal subscribers left us some tips about some good times to go to Alaska. And we're going to kind of touch on weather here as well when I cover this because it sort of ties in. Obviously, the Alaska cruising season runs from about May to September, right? So you've got that late, the late spring to summer months only. And here is what Paul Bjorlin said about cruising to Alaska and kind of timing. This is really interesting, by the way. There's some facts in here that I was totally unaware of that are, are fascinating. Paul Bjorlin, Paul, I hope I'm saying your name right, says, I have cruised Alaska 19 times so far and worked at a Princess Lodge. Cruising Alaska is different from month to month. May cruising will not have as much wildlife, but there will be plenty of wild, there will be plenty of wildlife. However, it will have the greatest waterfalls and the driest weather. This is the key, you guys. Paul is saying that in May, you have less rain. And uh, my husband and I and my son have always cruised to Alaska in May. In fact, we've never done anything else. And um, it is indeed dry. We've rarely had any rain at all. It's very sunny, but there is still snow on the mountains. So I'm going to continue to read Paul's email here. June will have a lot of wildlife, and the salmon runs will start mid-June. However, the rain will start the last weeks of June. July will have great wildlife viewing, but also the most rain of the cruising season, right in the middle of the summer. Who knew, right? August, the rain will start to ease up, but the cooler weather will start coming in, and the daylight will be starting, starting to shorten. September will really start to cool off, and the daylight will get much shorter, but possible northern lights viewing, especially on land packages. So if you want to see the northern lights, Paul is saying September. Um, now, Paul has a tip about land packages, too. You know how you can do a cruise, plain old Alaska cruise, or you can do a cruise tour, right? Um, he suggests that if you do a land package, to do it first, because the land package portion is more rushed, and then you can relax on the ship after the package. So thank you, Paul, for all of those wonderful tips. I hope that that helps some of you to um, understand when you might want to go to Alaska based on the weather and what's available to you at those times. So I thought those were really incredibly helpful tips. So let's see what everybody else is asking here. All right. Looks like we answered that question for you about when the best time is to cruise to Alaska. Yay! Um, Slasher is asking, are Alaska cruises cold in the summer? Well, Slasher, they're not really necessarily cold. It depends on where you're from and what kind of weather that you're used to. You're going to find that in Alaska in the summertime, the weather varies anywhere from, it can be as low as 40 degrees when you wake up in the morning to, you know, 70 to 75 degrees in the middle of the day and back down to some really cool um, weather at the end of the day. The coldest day on most Alaskan cruises is when you visit a glacier because as you approach the glacier and go through the glacial passage, it gets colder. You're approaching a, a very, you know, a freezing chunk of ice, so it gets colder. So on deck on those days, you're going to see people wearing things like um, warm down jackets. You may even see some hats and um, some scarves and some mittens and things like that. But generally speaking, it's not terribly cold. But during the day, you want to wear layers because the temperature will vary a lot. Um, we were in, um, I believe we were in Juneau about in 2015. And I will tell you what I wore that day and how I kind of went through my layers that day. I wore a pair of jeans and some sneakers. And I wore a basic, um, like a thermal t-shirt. And I wore a vest and a rain slicker. 
slicker. And throughout the day, I went from wearing my, uh, not rain slicker, but like a, you know, like a Columbia rain jacket. I went from wearing my rain jacket vest and my underlayer to wearing just the t-shirt back all the way up again to wearing the jacket and even a scarf around my neck. So it just varies a lot and you need to be prepared. But some of our best tips for clothing um, and packing for Alaska would be to make sure that you always, always, always focus on layers and make sure that you focus on comfort as well because daytime in Alaska, the things you're gonna be doing around the ship on deck and in ports are gonna be very casual. So think of jeans, comfortable tennis shoes, walking boots, you know, water resistant clothing and things like that is always a good rule of the day. Let's see here. Um, Rachel Shugart wants to know if the ships in Alaska have indoor pools. Some of them do, some of them don't. A lot of princess ships, Rachel, do have covered indoor heated pools, but you really do want to research that because there are some that don't even have heated pools. So make sure that you research that before you go. All right, sounds good here. Okay. Any other questions that you see coming in over there from the cockpit that you think we should? Address? Uh, let's see if we can get some clarification from Becky. She okay. Says, Do you have to split luggage up between land and sea? And I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Ooh, means. Becky, are you talking about when you do a land and sea tour? I would imagine that you probably don't. I think that the cruise line will probably take your luggage from the land portion to the cruise portion. We have not done a cruise tour yet, so I can't. Um, I can't answer that definitively. But maybe someone can weigh in that weigh in on that in the comments below. All right, Slasher asked if Alaskan cruises are in the summer. Yes, they are. They run from May to September, Slasher. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna read a few of our viewer questions. People who were potentially not going to be able to be here today asked me to ask some questions for them so that we can maybe get some answers in the live chat throughout. And then we're gonna move on and we're going to talk about ports in just a few minutes here. So let's see here what we have in the way of questions today. Okay, Jennifer Wenzel has a question for us. Jennifer wants to know some free or cheaper things to do in Ketchikan and also in Victoria for an evening stop. You know how sometimes those ships stop in Victoria but it's 7 p.m. to midnight, you guys? Can we give some tips to Jennifer on what to do in Victoria at night and cheap things in Ketchikan? Um, Sharon, who actually is here today, had a question for us too. Um, best cruise excursions to really see and experience Alaska They'll be in Skagway, Ketchikan, and Juneau, and another stop in Victoria at night. So Sharon, hopefully we'll cover that for you here when we get to shore excursions and ports and things like that in just a moment. I do also want to read another set of tips to you guys from one of our um, subscribers who actually lives in Canada. Um, night Audit used to work for a number of different hotels in Victoria. And I know Victoria is not in Alaska, but due to the foreign port requirement, most Alaska cruises do stop in Victoria. So I'm gonna read his tips to you guys on Victoria, some things, ideas for things to do. Um, number one, if you have a short stay in Victoria, Night Audit said the one thing you have to be sure to see is the Royal British Columbia Museum. Being near the Inner Harbor, you will see a lot of the great sites all at the same time. Doing Bouchard Gardens can be almost an all day event and you may not have time. Number two, something interesting to look for is a small round building on the far side of the harbor from where the ship dock. That was a pillbox for gun emplacement as part of the coastal defense system. It's not in use, but shows a bit of military history in Victoria. That's really fascinating and I'd never heard of that. And number three, this is really funny, you guys, but I guess Night Audit used to get this question a lot in Victoria. And the answer is yes, you can drink the water. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, Victoria water right out of the tap is great. It comes from uh, only one of two closed water systems in British Columbia and is considered to be some of the freshest water in all of Canada. Now you're making me thirsty, but I think that's a really good fact to know and some awesome, awesome tips on Victoria. So I hope that that is helpful for all of you who are visiting Victoria. We actually love Victoria and we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes here, but let's talk about ports for just a few moments, you guys. While we're talking about ports, could you all let me know what your favorite ports are and why and what you like to do in those ports and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the ports that we visited and some of the things that we like to do there. We love Ketchikan for its clinket culture and totems and its awesome walkability. It's a great little place to just get off the ship and walk around. Now Skagway has kind of that gold rush feel and we had a great rock climbing experience there and are really happy to tell you guys on our next cruise that we have been invited to join the White Pass Summit excursion. So you need to check out that rail excursion if you haven't already and that's WPYR, that stands for the, um, the White Pass Rail and we're gonna bring you some inner Views from maybe the conductor or a guide. Now let's talk about Juno real quick. Super walkable. You've got to 
go, if you go to Juno to the Red Dog Saloon, and just trust me here, just trust me, you have to try a duck fart. Google it and you'll find out what it is. Also, another great thing to do in Juno is to take the tram up to Mount Roberts. And these things I'm telling you guys are all within walking distance of your cruise ship. Now let's talk about Haynes. This is what you're seeing up on the screen right now. One of our all time favorite, charming, beautiful little ports. It's kind of near Skagway, but not everybody gets to go there. Victoria is awesome too. We were talking about that earlier. We love to go here to the Empress Hotel and have high tea. Has anybody ever had high tea at the Empress Hotel? It is so fun. We did it with my mom on our last cruise and it was so fun. It is so expensive though, you guys. Oh my gosh, save money. I don't know how much it is. I wanna say it's something like $70 per person, but it is such a treat. They even had a kid's menu for our child and he had like his own little royal menu and it was just so much fun. So let's see what other questions that we have coming in here. I'm kinda of trying to go with some of the things that we have on our agenda and then back to your questions so that we can make sure that we are saying hello. Kenneth, you are saying hello from Malta? My goodness sakes, you might be getting the award for um, most unique destination. Let's see here. Zachary said, just from looking at the shore excursion and not having been to Ketchikan, looks like your favorite. Zachary, Ketchikan is really fun. It's also super busy sometimes. We're going on a cruise this summer and we heard from one of the tour providers that there will be four ships in port the day that we're there. So it can be kind of a madhouse, but there's so much to do in Ketchikan, like um, flight seeing to the Misty Fjords, for example, is really fun. I think there's even a crab um, a crab feast and a flight scene combo. There's so many things to do. Uh, one time we did an adventure cart excursion in Ketchikan that was really fun. It is great and it's really walkable. You can walk up um, through town and you can even take a funicular kind of thing up to this hotel and have lunch at the hotel with this gorgeous view of all of Ketchikan, kind of the harbor there. It is it's really fun, it's beautiful. There's a lumberjack show, so much to do. So you are right, Zachary, that is a good one. Okay, let's see here. What other questions do we have? Anything from the cockpit? Brandy Sawyer would like to know what is the best way to find excursions not with the cruise line? Okay, Brandy wants to know what is the best way to find excursions not with the cruise line? That's a really good question. We like to research this in several different ways. Um, you, you know, obviously what you wanna do is ask around to people who have been there before, but we use cruiseline.com. We go on and check out their shore excursions. They actually have two different shore excursion providers. So that's always the first place that we look. And when you plug in all of your details about your cruise, the um, their interface knows what cruise tours are available to match. So that's what I would recommend that you do. Start there, get some other, you know, some other research, and you're probably plenty safe booking outside the cruise line for Alaska. One thing I will tell you though is make sure that your tour is back at least an hour and a half to two hours. That two hours would always be my bare minimum before that ship sails. So let's say you have a really short port stop, which a lot of people do say in Ketchikan, and you're there from 6.30 a.m. to 3.15. You want your tour back by 1, 1.30, something like that, just to be safe. You don't you never know, and especially if you're tendering. And some people do tender in Juno on occasion if it's if the port is really impacted. So, hope that that helps you. Diana is saying that she loves Bouchard Gardens in Victoria, and they have a lights version at night. Diana, I did not know that. That's a wonderful tip for those of you who are going to Victoria at night. Would be to check out Bouchard Gardens at night. Um, another comment from David Shoemaker about Victoria in the evening. They rented a limo with friends that they met on the ship and did a custom tour of the city. Limos parked all over, right next to the dock, so it's easy to jump in one and it's not expensive. That is awesome, David. I did not know that. We did a taxi tour, kind of like that one time when we pulled in late, but I didn't know you that they had limos just waiting there. That's so cool. Nancy Lucas says they always take a carriage ride through the town with Tally Ho carriage tours. That is awesome. Let's see here. I want to see what other tips are flowing in from everybody so that I can share them. Okay, let's see here. All right, so Slasher is asking, what is the best cruise line for Alaska cruises? And that is actually one of the things that we wanted to talk about today, you guys. We wanna hear your opinions on what the best cruise lines are. But I will tell you that the most popular cruise lines and the, and the most well-known two cruise lines for Alaska are going to be Princess and Holland America. Princess because they have the most ships going there. Holland America because they're just very well-known for how they do the cruises. Uh, both Princess and Holland America also offer um, combination tours. So the land, the land tours, also known as cruise tours, where you can 
either start or end your cruise with a portion of a land tour. So you can go and see Denali, and you can go stay at one of the many lodges that the cruise lines run. So there's a lot of really good options there. Those are probably the two best. But any cruise to Alaska is going to be wonderful, of course. I want to ask you guys a few more questions about that, too. I want to know from all of you, what is your favorite type of cruise to Alaska? Do you like mainstream, like the cruise lines we just mentioned? Do you like expedition lines, like Uncruise or Lindblad Expeditions? Or do you prefer more along the lines of an ultra luxury? So let us know what you think about that in the comments below. Ray Hunter Music said Canadian beer is good. So <laughs> for those of you looking for something to do at night in Victoria, go drink beer. I think that's a really good. Okay, Scott Lara coming in hot with Scott's super secret tip. Okay, this is a good one. Always book your return flight from Seattle after 12 noon. Don't be stressed thinking about your flight. That's a really good one, Scott. So you're saying that if you book something a little bit earlier and you're, you know, your ship pulls into port at 7 or 8 o'clock, you're going to be rushed if you do anything before noon. Seattle's kind of a crazy airport, isn't it, too? You, I think you're right. You, need to, you definitely need to do that. Um, let's see here. It looks like CK104 mentioned the Juno Jazz Festival and Classics Festival going on May 6th through 20th. Free shows at various venues around town. That's sounds really fun. Um, it looks like you're going to try to go to Brews and Beethoven at the Alaskan Brewing Company. Bonnie is saying she thinks Sitka is a tendering port too and had to cancel Sitka on your last cruise from rough seas. Yes, Sitka is a tender port and it's a fun little port. Um, we did enjoy it very much. It's also very walkable. You can go to Fortress of the Bears and see all the bears there. It's a really interesting place and a cute little town. Love that place. Okay. Zachary said mainstream is what their family can afford, but parents went on Ocean Oceania. Am I saying that right, Zachary? Oceania. I always feel like it's difficult to say. Um, and that went all the way up to Homer and Nome. Are you kidding me? That's so cool. I'm jealous. Very awesome. Okay, let's see here. It, let's see if we were missing any questions here. I know, um, Denisha, did I get your question yet? I'm seeing that you had wanted to know something too, and I want to make sure that we get you covered. Okay, let's see here. You have one for me? Diana S. Going on our first cruise to Alaska. Mm -hmm. This is June. Okay. Um, she wants to know if she'll be able to carry on her luggage. We are light packers and they just want a roll on her. Okay, luggage. so Diana is going to Alaska in June and wants to know if she can just carry on her luggage as a light packer. Diana, if it's a seven night cruise, you probably can. Now, the thing about Alaska is that you tend to pack more stuff and you tend to pack more bulky stuff. Jackets, hats, more shoes tend to be necessary. So I've never tried that. And quite frankly, it's really not that difficult to, to drop off your luggage. It's a little bit different than flying, right? When you fly, you kind of want to have carry-on if you can. You want to avoid those excess luggage fees that they charge. But on a cruise, I don't know. I really don't like to carry on. It's not my preference. So I think you can do it if you'd like. Just remember one thing. If your room isn't ready when you board, you might be stuck with your luggage. You can try to go drop it off at your room, but you may be stuck with it for those first few hours on embarkation. And I know that people don't really love that. So it's, it's something for you to think about. But yes, you can technically do it without a doubt. Bonnie is offering a tip on Juno. Loved the float plane to the Taku Lodge with Princess. Salmon barbecue, beautiful scenery, peaceful and yummy. Bonnie, that sounds wonderful. It also sounds a little bit expensive, but that's what I'm saying about Alaska, you guys. You gotta save a little bit of extra money for these, you know, these wonderful things that we wanna do. So speaking of that, I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about excursions. And I'm gonna share a few excursion tips with you in just a moment, but before I do, I wanna know a little bit more about what excursions that you would recommend for both cruisers on a budget and on the flip side, recommend some excursion splurges and I'll read them back in a moment. But I'm gonna tell you about my two favorites. Now my favorite budget excursion is to go to Nugget Falls in Juneau. You take a bus out there and then you can take the trail all the way to Nugget Falls, which is right by the Mendenhall Glacier. It's a treat. Now, if we're gonna talk about splurges, you guys, my favorite is to take a helicopter tour to a glacier. Now that is really extravagant and an absolute treat, but it's something that's a once in a lifetime opportunity and you can do it in a lot of different ports in Alaska. It is so much fun. So please let us know what are your splurges and what are your tips for us on a budget. And I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time now reading a little bit about what you all are saying in the comments because I've been talking a lot and I wanna make sure I'm not missing 
I'm uh, missing it here. Um, Becky Reith wants to know if the Crab Shack is on Princess as well, as well. Yes, the Crab Shack is on select ships, Becky, and it's only gonna be on select nights. So it's not something that you're going to be able to go to every night. So you really wanna keep an eye on your Princess Patter and make sure that you know exactly when um, when it's available and if you you know if you're really interested in going you could also check as soon as you board and ask them what nights they're planning to do that okay good question all right let's see here um, okay Karen thank you very much for answering the question uh, Ray's question about the birth certificate and ID I see that I did not get to that fast enough. Sandra Erickson wants to know, what are shipboard credits commonly used for? And what would the most typical amount be on a seven day cruise? Sandra, it really varies. Um, shipboard credits <clears throat> could be something that you got when you booked your cruise as an extra incentive. It could be a number of different things. Excuse me. <clears throat> so sorry, you guys. The most common things that people would use their shipboard credits for would be spa treatments, specialty dining, maybe even excursions, depends on how much you have. You might even be able to apply it towards your gratuities. Hope that that helps you a little bit. All right, Twymama43 is saying that Tracy's Crab Shack is a must do in Juno. I've heard this too, um, Tracy. I heard this on the Cruise Dudes podcast. I believe they said that the Crab Shack is awesome. <clears throat> and that is a splurge, isn't it? Isn't it a little bit pricey, but totally worth it? And it's right out on the dock. Let us know a little bit more about that. Okay. All right, let's see here. Brandy Sawyer is asking, any suggestions on seeing bears that won't cost an arm and a leg in Juno, Ketchikan, and Sitka? Brandy, I have been um, researching that as well. And I think there are some rainforest sanctuary and wildlife tours in Ketchikan from Taquan Air, the same company that manages Taquan Air, I believe, has some um, excursions there. So we're going to look into that for you. And if we can find a good, cheap excursion for you, I'm going to link to it in the notes after this episode. you have a question? No, I was yeah. just going to mention the Fortress of the Bear. I oh, yeah, Fortress of the Bear. Yeah, exactly. Um, my husband, Brandy, had just said something else about bears. Um, when we went to Sitka, we, I had mentioned earlier that we went to Fortress of the Bears. And it's kind of hard to explain this place because it's not the bears aren't really out in the wild. They're sort of contained, and it was a little bit depressing. Um, so if you're going to go there, you do want to look into it in advance and make sure it's something you're okay with. It's hard to explain that, but I think I know what he's saying about it being kind of... Um, contained. Sarah Byfield is wondering if we had ever seen whales from the ship. We've seen a few from a distance, but not as many, Sarah, as some other cruisers um, have, have reported seeing. Okay, we've got some tips coming in here. I'm excited to read this one. David Shoemaker said, a Skagway tip is to grab a window table at the Skywalker nightclub if you're on a princess ship to watch the departure and have a drink. The ships sometimes back out of port in reverse, which is interesting. David, that is such an excellent tip and I really appreciate you sharing that because I know we actually often book inside cabins to Alaska because the itineraries that we like are these 10 night itineraries out of San Francisco and they're actually quite expensive so we're always looking for great places to go and see the world go by and that's an awesome tip I love those Skywalker lounges because they're so high up on the ship and there's so much to see that's a really good one all right Bonnie did an all-you-can-eat crab excursion in Ketchikan first went on a small boat catching the crabs whoa cool and then to a restaurant to eat the crabs and blueberry cobbler okay that's my idea of heaven I would even skip the blueberry cobbler if you could just give me all the crap I could eat <laughs> it sounds so good um, I Akshi23 just joined and wants to know if there's um, halal or kosher food available on the ship. Oh my gosh, I love this question. Yes, most cruise lines do have excellent, excellent records of accommodating just about any dietary requirement that you could imagine. Um, what we do recommend that you do is advise Princess, I believe. Did you say Princess is what you're sailing on there? Let's see. You didn't mention what cruise line, but advise your cruise line of your requirements. I know for sure that they do have kosher requirements. And we've heard of many people cruising um, vegan, gluten-free with serious allergy and sensitivities, food allergies, you name it, they can do it, and they will spoil you. They may even give you the opportunity to meet with a maitre d' or head waiter the day before to look at the menus and find out what they can make for you that would meet your requirements. And when necessary, they even prepare those special foods in a separate part of the kitchen. It's fascinating stuff. They will absolutely accommodate you. Um, I can highly recommend uh, Princess as a cruise line for making those special accommodations. So I hope that that helps you. 
Let's see what we have coming in here. Becky said, any suggestions on where to sit on the train and what to bring? I assume that you're talking about the White Pass Summit excursion. We don't know yet because we haven't done it. If the cruise dudes are here, maybe they can weigh in on this because I know that they have done that excursion. But from looking at the, um, the vintage train cars on the White Pass Summit excursion, every seat looks like a good seat to me. Um, they're two by two, so you only have two on each side and they all have giant windows. I am just assuming there is not a bad seat in the house house. Um, so Karen is agreeing that they go up and back on the same track so you'll see either way. Not a bad seat on that one. Zachary wants to know what are our least favorite Alaska ports and destinations? Your parents went and they didn't like Nome and they didn't enjoy Fairbanks. I've never been to those two Zachary but I would say I get I get probably the least excited about Ketchikan if and only if I don't have something planned outside of the little city area. I feel like I've been there, done that with Ketchikan in the walking around. So I wanna get out of town and go experience things. So if I had to pick a least favorite, which is really hard to do, it would probably be um, just walking around in Ketchikan, but for no reason other than I wanna go, I wanna go explore, I wanna go do something more adventurous. And we're hoping that we can do that this time. We're looking into flight seeing, adventure carts, or something like that, maybe even zip lining, you never know. Okay, Julianne, I don't know if this is a question related to Alaska, but this is a good one. Julianne wants to know how to convince her parents to let them go on a carnival cruise with them. Julianne, are they going without you? Um, I think that you do your research on where they're going and give them a full report on why you want to go and how you can benefit from the different places that you're going to visit and tell them that you'll do a full report when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any suggestions on that? Tell them, carry their bags for them. Tell them you'll carry their bags for them, my husband said. I love that. That's great. Um, we have, oh, Sherry Sandlin said on the White Pass Rail that she likes the left side of the train. Um, let's see here. David Shoemaker said the train to the Yukon was awesome, but in hindsight, you chose an excursion that was too long and you didn't get to explore Skagway. So David, what if you had just done the summit excursion? It sounds like you went all the way to the Yukon. The summit excursion is only three to three and a half hours long, but you went a little past that, right? Let us know, clarify so we can explain that to people. Okay. Melissa F. is talking about the food allergies that we talked about earlier. And she said, if you're at the buffet, a chef can come out and walk you through the options if you have food allergies too. Always ask for help since you have food allergies yourself. So that's great, Melissa. I'm glad that you addressed that because it's not just the main dining room staff that can help you is basically what you're saying. Thank you so much for that excellent tip. I really appreciate that. Okay. Um, Diana's saying, I think it was one of your videos that you went on a 4x4 drive on Takshinook Mountain Trail. Is that worth it for a first timer? You made it look like so much fun. Diana, you have such a good memory. I'm touched by that. Was it worth it? Oh my gosh, yes. And it was actually a very reasonably priced excursion. Um, the wonderful thing about the Takshinook Mountain Trail excursion in Haines, if you're lucky enough to go to Haines, which is a total treat, um, I know some Skagway tour providers offer it too. I have seen that on the shore excursion list for Skagway. They take, they must vary you. Over to Haynes to do it, but yes, it's totally worth it. And just to give you an idea of how much we loved it, we felt that it was it was appropriate for all ages because it was my husband and I, our little son who was only six at the time, and my mom, who hi mom, I'm sorry, but I'm going to talk about your age, who's in her 70s. Okay, she loved it. She was totally comfortable the whole time. It is um, it's an outdoor excursion and it's an active excursion, but it's also just wonderful for people of all ages. And the meal that they served at the lodge and the cookies that they served at the lodge were off the hook, you guys. Oh my gosh. They made the best fried halibut and they even put out the ingredients for us to show their recipe. So they, they put everything out um, on the counter to show how they do, what batter they use, the, the exact beer that they'd use for the batter and a thing of dill weed to show you exactly what was in the Alaskan halibut. So it's lovely, it's wonderful, you see so much. In fact, I'm following Takshinik Mountain Trail on Facebook and I saw a picture. They are totally like unburying from snow right now. Um, it's that time of year when they're getting ready and they got their parking lot cleared off and it looks really cool. So, um, Becky Reith is asking what store or souvenir is not to miss? Becky, that is such a good question. My answer, and I'm hoping other people will weigh, on the, weigh in on this because I don't shop a lot in Alaska. I like to do more adventure things, but there are some wonderful things to buy in Alaska. I would try to find those small local shops when you can because they sell a lot of really beautiful local items in all of these little towns. 
There's a lot of blueberry themed things in some towns. Obviously, totems are kind of a cool thing to buy. You know what we buy? I have to say, there is one thing that we like to buy in Alaska. We like to collect Christmas ornaments from places that we visit. And we've gotten some of the cutest ornaments um, from even really touristy shops in Ketchikan and things like that. So, okay. All right, Slasher said, I don't know if you answered this before, but what are our favorite cruise lines for Alaska? Slasher, our favorite's Princess, but Princess and Holland America do it really beautifully. All of the cruise lines do Alaska really well, but Princess and Holland America have the biggest presence. Okay, Karen Byers is elaborating on the food allergies for her Alaska cruise, saying that Princess is amazing. The head waiter brought her daughter the following night menus each night so that they could be sure her meals were safe. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, yes, we're getting some confirmation here that Holland America and Princess are the most popular. Oh, Roby004 is bringing up something I'm excited to talk about and wants to talk about Norwegian Bliss. Remind me, is Norwegian Bliss on Alaska's West Coast itinerary and has solo cabins? Yes, Norwegian Bliss is coming to um, Alaska the Mexican Riviera, and then the Caribbean next year. And yes, I do believe that they do have some solo cabins and we are really excited about that. In fact, we are booked on Bliss, you guys, but believe it or not, we're not booked on Bliss for Alaska. We're doing the Mexican Riviera for budget purposes. So um, cannot wait to get on that ship. Are any of you booked on Bliss? And if you are, where are you going? Are you doing Caribbean, Alaska, or are you doing the Mexican Riviera? Sharon, Speaking of Norwegian Bliss, you had mentioned to me that you wanted to do Bliss, but you were concerned because they don't have a glacier day. I am seeing that they do have Sawyer Glacier on their itinerary, so you'll have to explain to me later what you meant about that. Okay, um, let's see here. What we have some, I think we have some tips coming in here from all of you, and I want to read them back. Let's see what we have. Um, Bonnie wants to know if we have any good or bad experiences with Denali. So if anybody's been to Denali, please let her know. Becky wants to know what Canadian beer is the best on, um, on Princess or just in general in Alaska? Oh, oh, okay, maybe, um, maybe we can have our Canadian friends answer that. And my husband has one for us. Yeah. Oh, you're looking at me, no? Okay, um, let's see. Okay. Very good. Okay, let's go to some more questions for all of you. We have some good ones here. We've read you some tips. Let's see if we've covered everybody's questions. I just wanna make sure we did that. Yes, okay. So, I wanna know now from everybody, what is your favorite itinerary to Alaska? So do you like the inside passage? Do you like cruise tours? Or do you like those Gulf of Alaska cruises that basically go to the same ports as the inside passage but start in one location and end in another? Let us know. We wanna hear a little bit more about that. And we have a few more things that we wanna ask you. Does anybody wanna weigh into on what they think the best lines are for cruise tours? Let us know if you have any, um, if you have any tips on that. And let's see what questions that we have coming in here now. Oh, yeah. Kyle. Kyle. Um, opinions on Carnival Splendor, 14 day Alaska cruise from Long Beach. Oh, Kyle Underwood wants to know what are our opinions on the Carnival Splendor, 14 day Alaska cruise from Long Beach? Kyle, I saw those itineraries and they look wonderful. Carnival Splendor is a cool ship. A little bit bigger than, say, the Carnival Miracle. Carnival Miracle. It's a lot of fun. It's a great ship. I think it's a really cool itinerary. I also noticed that Princess is doing a 12 night from Los Angeles next year. That sounds kind of intriguing. Here's the problem that I have with a 14 day Alaska cruise from Long Beach. The problem that I have with that is that I would have to take a little bit too much time off work. So that's a little bit long for me. The longest I'm gonna do on most cruises is about 10, probably 10 days. And with that cruise, you're gonna be spending a lot of time getting to Alaska. So Kyle, I would say if you really like sea days, then you should probably book that one. I think it would be great. I know it's a little bit on the pricey side, but I'm hearing good things about the longer carnival excursions, excuse me, uh, voyages for the most part. Craig Butland wants to know if I've been on Sun Princess. I have not been on Sun Princess, but I've heard great things about it. We have someone asking for parking suggestions in Seattle. If anyone has them, that would be great. All right. Um, 
D. Veronica wants to know what are vegetarian options like on Royal Caribbean Enchantment of the Seas, the Seas, the Seas. <laughs> sorry about that. I haven't been on Enchantment, but I understand that Royal Caribbean does a beautiful job with vegetarian entrees. And Matt over at Royal Caribbean blog says that one of the best things that you can get for a vegetarian entree on Royal Caribbean is their Indian curries. They do them beautifully. Um, so that would be something that I would recommend. Sherry Sandlin is going on Holland, a new Amsterdam with a Denali land tour and can't wait. That sounds great, Sherry. Let us know how long your Denali land tour is. Um, Emma wants to know if Royal Caribbean does Alaska cruises and if so, are they good? Yes, they do a few Alaskan cruises. They do have a ship or two up there. And my understanding is that they're fantastic, wonderful. If you like Royal Caribbean, they are older ships. You're not going to get all the bells and whistles with the newer ships, but that's okay. You're still getting the Royal um, Caribbean product. Crystal Cares wants to know what you can do for free in Alaska. Crystal, I would say in Alaska for free, some of the things that you could do, would they're mostly going to involve just walking around the ports. The nice thing about these Alaskan ports is that they're all beautifully walkable. I can't think of a single um, port that we haven't just done that at one point on one of our cruises. Now, do I recommend that? No, not necessarily, because I think that in order to really see Alaska, you need to get out of the little port. They're very um, commercial. They're filled with shops, and if you want to see outside of those areas, you probably need to get out a little bit and explore. Okay. Um, Karen Byers has a tip. She said, if you have issues with seasickness, the inside passage is like glass, but sailing from California has rough seas. So for the person who asked us about that 14 night from LA, yeah, that's going to be rough. It's a pro if it's a problem, you might want to go from Washington. I couldn't agree more. Roby has a tip about the Rockies. If you like the Rockies and you're on the East Coast, take the, the Via Rail from Vancouver to Edmonton. Nice view. Sounds beautiful. Sounds wonderful. Okay, I think that my husband is flagging me with a question. From Diana S. Diana S. She says, I saw Princess has a Tracy on Fjord cruise and a Glacier Bay mm, cruise. Mm -hmm. Is one considered better? Than oh my better? goodness. Okay, Tracy's wanting to, is Tracy or Diana? Diana. Diana wants to know about Tracy Arm. Sorry, Diana, Tracy Arm and Glacier Bay are both both fantastic and very grand and beautiful. We've been to both. Our next cruise will be on will be going to Tracy Arm. Um, I would say Glacier Bay is a little bit more grand, and there's a risk with Tracy Arm of sometimes not being able to get into the passageway if you're too early in the season. So we've been on two May cruises where it was we couldn't even get to the glacier because it was too icy in the passageway. So um, we, I would say if I had to choose, I'd probably prefer Glacier Bay, but Tracy Arm, getting in and going through the fjord, it's spectacular. There's nothing better than sitting in a hot tub and having a cocktail as you go through that passageway. You will see waterfalls, you will see wildlife, you will see the most gorgeous floating icebergs. And if it's cloudy, there'll be this gorgeous Windex color of blue. It's just spectacular. So please don't worry too much about it. Don't let it influence your booking unless you're going early May. And then you might wanna skip Tracy Arm because it is really, really risky. Okay. Um, Jerome P. said, in Glacier Bay, the best place to view is on your own balcony. If you're on a princess ship, the second place is up on Skywalkers. Yeah, Skywalkers is getting a lot of love today. Um, for those of you who have been on princess ships, Skywalkers is a lounge, bar, nightclub, whatever you want to call it, that is perched at the back of the ship, so aft of the ship, way up high. We're talking about um, a few decks above the highest decks on the ship, and it is spectacular. It has 360 degree views. Basically, it has 360 degree views because it's all windows. It's so cool. Such a good place, and you can you can watch um, glacier viewing. You can be you know it could be freezing outside. It could be raining, and you could be in the sheltered, beautiful, warm lounge having a hot cocoa. Okay, Melanie McIntyre says, when should we get to port on embarkation day to check in? Early, late, we're leaving from Seattle on the Norwegian Pearl. Melanie, it's a matter of personal um, preference. We are 100% those early people. We get there before the darned doors even open to the port, like 10.30 in the morning, and we're willing to wait because we'd like to get on the ship as early as possible. But you have to be patient. One thing I would say is choose one. Either go early or go late. Don't get there at 12, 12.31 when everybody else gets there. Either get there at 11 or get there after 2, and then you'll just walk right on the ship after 2. But the majority of people do go early. So if you do not like crowds, go late and walk right on the ship. 
Um, let's see here. Endel Sandoz has shoe recommendations, wants to know about shoes. You know what's so funny? Endel, am I saying your name right? Endel, Endel? I was just thinking about shoes for Alaska this morning because we are um, planning a trip to Alaska this summer and I was thinking, I always pack sneakers, you know, good old fashioned athletic shoes, but I was wondering if maybe I'd mix it up a little bit and go with some boots uh, this year. Not, you know, nothing fancy, but maybe something a little bit more stylish, but we wear sneakers the entire time. Sh uh, walking around the ship, because it can be slick and wet, you want something with a nice tread on the bottom of it, you know, a, a nice non-marking sole. So I literally wear my athletic shoes the great majority of the time in port and on the ship. I hope that that helps you. Okay. Um, Diana S. is talking about that Seattle parking question. Says, I believe Seattle has different parking garages depending on whichever cruise line you're going on. You can check it out at Cruise Seattle Parking. Okay. Emma Kate wants to know, what are the best parts of an Alaska cruise? I'm trying to convince my family to go on one. Is that what you were looking at too over there, that mm -hmm. question? Okay. Emma Kate, the best parts of an Alaskan cruise are the fact that when you go on an Alaskan cruise, you get to see Alaska from a totally different vantage point than any other type of travel to Alaska. Now that's not to say in a land vacation to Alaska wouldn't be ex exceptional, but cruising the inside passage uh, on the way from Seattle or Vancouver or wherever you're going, San Francisco is absolutely spectacular. You will see wildlife, you will see little pine covered islands. Um, it's also a wonderful family trip. It is a wonderful thing to bond over, to be in the presence of the last frontier and to see the grandeur and to smell the pine and to be together as a family for that kind of experience is something really special. It's also a little bit more of a, it can be a little bit more relaxing than say, for example, a Caribbean cruise. The pace can be a little bit slower and a little bit more tranquil. It's also good for people of all ages. I think the coolest thing would be to do an all generations Alaska cruise, pack the grandparents, the babies, everyone in between and jump on a ship. There's something for everyone in Alaska. So I hope that that helps you. All right, let's see here. Soledad Medina wants a shout out. Shout out, Soledad. Welcome. So glad you made it. Um, Eon is good. Thank you for um, talking a little bit more about the shoes. You want to know if you need to buy a hiking shoe or boot. You only need to buy a hiking shoe or boot for Alaska if you plan to do a lot of outdoor excursions, such as um, hiking in the rainforest, zip lining, things like that. If you're not going to be doing any super active excursions, you do not need to do that. Even when you do some kind of a tour, to um, a glacier, they're going to provide you with boots, so to speak. So if you need something specialist like that. Um, Sherry Sandland is weighing in on something that she loves a lot about Alaska, and I didn't mention that, and I wanted to mention that to you all, that she said she loves that there is a naturalist on board, and that is so true. That is such a beautiful thing about cruising to Alaska is that they do have onboard naturalists. And during glacier days, the onboard naturalist is going to come on the overhead speaker for the entire cruise ship. So if you're out on deck, anywhere out on deck, you're going to be able to hear the naturalist speaking about the area that you are cruising to, the glacier, the wildlife, and it is absolutely magnificent experience. The naturalist is a real treat. We have even heard of Alaska cruises where in certain ports they will bring sled dogs on board and their puppies. I know Princess has something called puppies in the piazza. At least they did. I don't know if they're still doing it. And that sounds like so much fun. I think my son would go crazy. Um, looks like Amy was um, getting some tips on going to Totem Bite Park in Ketchikan. That is a wonderful excursion. Is that what you wanted to tell? Oh, totem Heritage. She wants to know oh, which one. Okay. Six hours. Okay, got it. So uh, what was the name? Is it Amy? Amy. Mike. Amy, you're going to Ketchikan and you want to know which Totem Park to go to. We researched that before our last cruise and we chose Totem Bite Park. You remember that, honey. I'm impressed with you. That is really impressive. Totem Bite Park is awesome. I don't remember why we chose it, but I feel like it might have been that Totem Park was waterfront. And I wanted to kind of see the, the water, and we had a great time. You, you know, you go on a guided tour and they walk you through at Totem Bite and they, they educate you, but you can kind of wander off a little bit on your own and they have some great shopping at the end as well. Our son kind of walked out onto a rocky beach and was walking amongst the driftwood and just kind of burning off some energy when we did that trip and it was really great. Um, 
Let's see here. Becky said, which naturalists and presentations are not to miss on Princess? Becky, they vary so much from ship to ship. You never know who you're going to get. So I would say anyone that's available. Um, most of the time, the naturalists are going to present more on glacier days. So you're not going to be given a huge amount of choices. Um, they don't necessarily stay on. They come on from the parks department for a short time. Um, Let's see here. Okay, bye Slasher, thanks for joining. Sherry Sandlin said that Totem Bite Park had a lot of eagles. Now we've got some seasickness questions coming in here, I believe here, right? Did you, can you tell me where that seasickness question is and maybe what it says? It's Terry Hostetler. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna first recommend to watch our videos, but then say okay. if it's a real big problem, see mm -hmm. your doctor first. Okay, get the Come scope back. Okay, sounds good. Terry's asking about motion sickness, you guys, um, for Alaska. And I want to say that we had one of our one of our subscribers had given us a question on when you should, and I don't know if I have it here, but there was a good a good tip on um, seasickness and as it pertains to golf cruises, but I can't find it, so I'm gonna to try to go on memory. Okay, couple of things for you about seasickness for Alaska. Number one, we have a lot of videos on the topic, so be sure to watch those. We have kind of an overall seasickness videos that gives you the general tips on where to book your cabin. So lower on the ship in the center is always gonna be better. You're gonna have less motion, okay? There are all kinds of wrist products that you can use. Um, the Neuro Wave should be coming out soon. There are the bands that have the pressure points for motion sickness that can help a lot of people. But if you're really worried about it, go get a prescription from your doctor for the scope patch. I think it's scopolamine. But be careful because that can have side effects and you need to be aware of those um, side effects. One of our um, subscribers did contact me, I wanna say on Facebook or somewhere, and I'm so sorry that I forgot to print it out to say that if you, um, if you're going on a Gulf of Alaska cruise that you want to book, I want to say you want to book north to south if you're doing one of those open jaw cruises that starts in one port and ends in another. I can't remember why that is, but um, I think that that's a good tip. Okay, let's see here. Becky's weighing in on seasickness as well, saying that if worried about seasickness, take a Dramamine every morning with vitamins regardless. John is talking about dress code in Alaska. John wants to know, since Alaska cruises seem more casual, what do you wear for formal nights or evening meals? John, you wear the same things that you would wear on a normal cruise. Um, you will actually see people a little more dressed up for dinners um, on Alaskan cruises because I think you get a little bit more of the cruising traditionally type of people that go on those Alaska cruises. You're going to see some tuxes. You're going to see some people in just, you know, shirts and tie. My husband wears a shirt and a tie with no jacket most of the time just to keep the bulk down in our packing. But then you'll also see a lot of sport coats, suits, things like that. I hope that that helps you. But yeah, days around the ship are going to be real casual. And dinners, one thing that I would recommend, John, and this is especially for the ladies, but one thing I've learned repeatedly the hard way on Alaska cruises is I can't really wear my sundresses as much to dinner because I get cold. So you have to maybe wear some sleeves, um, pack a wrap, things like that. Okay, Sandra wants to know, what are the differences between Hubbard and Glacier Bay? They have an aft cabin and they're wondering about the views. I haven't been to Hubbard, so I'm hoping someone, Sandra, can weigh in. Zachary has a good tip that he would prefer south to north on a Gulf cruise because you don't you only want to go through customs once. That's a really good point, Zachary. Um, let's see here. Okay, let's see what other questions that we have. I know there are some that I am missing. Let's see here. Any that you see that I've missed completely? No, none. Okay, you guys, we want to hear a little bit more from you all about some of the things that you enjoy doing in Alaska. We want to hear what excursions that you would recommend for people. It's one of the number one questions that we get. So please comment below and let us know what excursions that you recommend for our subscribers. And then I want to talk a little bit about wildlife too. Have you seen wildlife in Alaska? I know a lot of people are saying that they've seen whales, but what about other types of wildlife? Have you seen salmon spawning? Have you seen bears? Have you seen mountain goats? Tell us all about the t different type of wildlife that you have seen. Okay, David is saying that Alaskan cruises are really relaxing. It's a different atmosphere than the high energy Caribbean cruises, but it's still very fun, but calm and relaxing. Yes, that's very, very good. I completely agree with that. Okay, Sarah Byfield says, please share with us your finger injury before you go. I had a feeling this was gonna come up, Sarah. I had a little run-in with a knife. I'm sorry, here it is. 
in the kitchen on Thursday and ended up with four stitches. I was cutting bread and I basically, I don't really want to tell you how bad it is. It was bad. I had to go to urgent care and get some stitches. The good news is, you guys, um, it didn't hurt getting stitched up and it didn't even hurt when they numbed me up. And I'm a little bit squeamish and terrified about the whole numbing process more than getting the stitches, but it was, it was pretty gross. Let's just say I had to have a stitch through the nail. <laughs> So, sorry about the Band-Aid, but I absolutely have to keep something over the tip of it because if not, I bump it and it hurts really bad and it starts to bleed. So anyway, um, Zara Doyle wants to know, can you bring a flat iron on cruises? Yes, you sure can, Zara. You can take a flat iron, a curling iron, anything you want. Brenda, I missed both of your, both of, both of your questions. Okay, Brenda Brush's questions, honey. Can you see if you can find them? We don't want to miss those for her. We don't want to miss you. Brenda, we're going to get back to your questions. I promise. Okay. Let's see here. Thank you, Bonnie. Oh, yes. No, I answered them. What? Oh, maybe she, you... She probably didn't see because I typed Oh, in. Brenda, I think my husband typed the answers to your questions instead of me answering live. Tell what, me what they were. What ports offer whale watching excursions? And I okay. told her that Juno was a safe bet. Yes, exactly. Brenda, you wanted to know what ports offer whale watching. Yes, Juno is a great bet for whale watching excursions. Um, most of them actually do. You know what other port offers whale watching is Victoria. If you're going to Canada, that's a wonderful way to spend the day. Go whale watching. And you can usually see orcas as well. She also had a question about mm -hmm. celebrity solstice. And it's just kind of open, you know, what's your opinion mm -hmm. of celebrity solstice? I haven't been on celebrity solstice yet. I'm sorry that I can't answer that question, but it's um, from everything that I've seen on YouTube and photos, it's a very contemporary ship. It's very modern and beautiful. And I've heard nothing but great things about the food on celebrity solstice. So I hope that that helps you. Okay, David Shoemaker has a tip for balcony for Glacier Bay. Get a balcony on Gla when you're going to Glacier Bay and turn on the speakers in the room to hear the naturalist ex explanations and presentation about the glaciers. That is an excellent tip. Um, Ian is asking if you can buy crabs in Alaska and send it by mail to California. I don't know. I feel like Tracy's Crab Shack does ship crab back to, um, to California. That is a great tip. Okay, sounds good. Let's see here. Rich F says, take the train ride in Skagway and definitely do a whale or glacier excursion in Juneau. And the Lumberjack Show in Ketchikan is fun. Okay, so Rich has given us some really good port tips here, you guys. The White Pass Rail in Skagway, whale watching or a and or a glacier excursion in Juneau, and the Lumberjack Show in Ketchikan is fun. Those are awesome, awesome tips. Thank you so much for that. Okay. So hopefully we're getting everybody's questions. Did you okay. See a question about mailing crabs? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. I did answer it though. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, it's Amy Meyer said that there was a three episode series on Alaska on Netflix. Amy, my mom mentioned that to me. I've heard that it's amazing. Are you enjoying it? What is it what is it talking about? Is it the history of Alaska? Okay. Um, let's see here. Ray Hunter Music wants to know, if you sail out of San Francisco, how is the parking? That is a great question. It is expensive. <laughs> that is going to be my primary commentary on parking out of San Francisco, but it's worth it. Here's how we do it. We live in California, and so we're quite a drive, like, you know, six hours from San Francisco. So what we do is we go halfway the night before our cruise, we stop kind of between where we live in San Francisco and then we go the rest of the way and then we park in um, in the lot that's across the street. I'm trying to remember, Ray Hunter Music, what the lot is called. It has a number associated with it and I've already actually paid for mine for the summer because it can fill up. And I get a little bit worried about that, but it's righteously expensive. I think it's something like $18 a day, but you gotta do it. There's just really no other choices. I have always felt very secure um, Brenda, no problem. Yes, hubby does answer questions while I'm talking. So he's actually commenting over in the live chat on a separate computer so that I, you know, I can maintain eye contact and actually talk to you guys. If I was doing both, um, I would never have time to talk and you wouldn't want that. Okay. Um, Barbara is going to the Caribbean and wants to know tender boats and half moon K. We're talking today, Barbara, about Alaska mainly, but I will tell you that they're very nice. Um, it can be bumpy and rocky in half moon key. And if you're in a wheelchair, they will assist you. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Get on shore. A half moon key is beautiful. So let's see here. Okay. 
Let's see here, um, Twilight End Zone. Thank you, I'm sorry we missed your question. You said your coffee question above might have gotten missed. You were asking if they have specialty coffees that are sugar-free on Princess. When you say specialty coffees, I think you mean like if you wanna get a vanilla latte, do they have sugar-free syrups? Yes, they have a few. Um, I have had them before. I don't know if they have them on every ship, but I think you could probably get the basic flavors like sugar-free vanilla, maybe sugar-free hazelnut, but I don't know about all of those. So we'll have to see if anybody else has to weigh in on that. Jerome P is saying tendering is so much fun. Jerome, you're a glutton for punishment. Are you being funny? I don't really like tendering. I think it's kind of annoying. I feel like it's like a traffic jam at sea. <laughs> but you know what it is that bugs me about tendering? It's that it's just like, a, you know, it's the process of having to get a tender ticket and then wait in another line and then wait in another line to get in a line and everybody kind of crowds the stairwells. But the worst part about tendering for me, not that I'm ever going to complain about being on a cruise, right? It's the smell of exhaust that comes in through the tender when you're on it sometimes. And this doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes when they're really enclosed, I feel like it's kind of... Um, I don't know, it just, it makes me feel a little bit nauseous. So sorry about that, complaining about tendering. Becky wants to know, are you more prone to get up early or stay late in Alaska? I'm more prone to get up early because I'm an early bird as it is and I'm not much of a partier, so I'm not gonna be out late at the nightclub, but I like to get up early and see the world going by, Becky. There's so much to see in Alaska and there's, again, like I mentioned earlier in this live stream, there's this stillness that kind of comes over Alaska. Okay, Brian Yawn is going on uh, their first cruise in August, should you get the travel insurance. Brian, I always recommend travel insurance for anyone. It is a very good idea. I will say that the older we get, the more we need travel insurance. I'm just gonna put it out there as a, a statement. More things can happen, medical things can come up, medical things can come up on the ship, before the cruise, whatever it is, so yes, I do recommend it. You don't have to buy it through your cruise line though. You can buy it through your travel agent, through an outside company, and that may be cheaper. Amy is telling us a little bit more about the Netflix series that's going on in Alaska right now. She said it's varied. It's very interesting, mostly about wildlife and inland areas. And um, you are doing a DIY land portion to Denali. That is awesome. So you're learning about the Tongass National Forest. Very cool. Okay. I'm seeing other people recommend that you do um, get travel insurance. I think that's a really good idea. Very good. You guys, we've been doing this for an hour. I can't believe that we've been going for an hour. So what I need for you all to do now is make sure that you let me know if I have missed your question. We're gonna stick around for a few more minutes and make sure that we have not missed your Alaska questions today. I wanna to make sure that I haven't missed anything. I'm gonna go through the notes and I'm gonna talk a little bit more, you guys, before we um, sign out today. I'm going to talk to you all a little bit more about the White Pass Rail because I'm really getting excited about this. The White Pass Summit Excursion is what we're going to be doing when we visit um, Skagway this summer. And we're really so impressed with the company that we've been working with to make this happen for you guys. And we are going to be relaxing in their vintage passenger coaches as we retrace the original route to the White Pass Summit. So I'm reading a little bit about this right now, and it just sounds so amazing. Here are some facts about the summit experience. Um, it is a 40 mile round trip excursion and they can pick you up right at the ship. So you guys can book this one right through your ship and they will literally, you walk off the ship and you get on the train and it takes you up. Um, it climbs from Tidewater at Skagway to the summit of the White Pass, a 2,865 foot elevation. It's a fully narrated tour. It passes two tunnels. Um, it goes over sky-high trestles and cascading waterfalls. It sounds so awesome, you guys. So this is three to three and a half hours. One of the things I'm really excited about with this too in Skagway is that we're also going to have time to do other things while we're there. You know, we have all day, but we get to go on the White Pass Rail and do that. So we're so thrilled and so appreciative that um, that this company is working with us to bring the experience to you. So stay tuned for that way later this summer. We've got a few months here. Okay, let's see if we've answered everybody's questions. Do we have any coming in at the end here? Okay, let's see. I'm seeing that, um, well, no, I don't think there's a question there, okay. Luggage goes with you. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions come in, you guys, so we are going to start to wrap up. Oh, one, one more, oh. Diana S. Is as well. there time between excursions to have lunch on ship mm -hmm. if we have just over two hours? Diana wants to know if there is time between excursions to go back onto your ship and have lunch. 
Probably, yes. It depends on how much time you have between your excursions. Is she saying she has two hours between excursions? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking that. It, is it practical mm -hmm. to get on and off the ship just yeah. for a meal? Usually, yeah. Usually it is practical to get on and off the ship. In Alaska, if you are docking, which most of the time you dock, the only place I've ever tendered would be Sitka and on occasion Juneau. We keep getting on these princess cruises that tender in Juneau because there's too many darn ships in one day. But for the most part, yes, get back on the ship, have lunch, don't spend the money. We would totally recommend that. I very rarely buy food in Alaska because I mean, obviously there's wonderful crab and seafood on um, land, but gosh, you've got regional specialties on the ship too. So yes, I say get back on if you have two hours in between, that should be good. Okay. Second part to that, okay. is the duck tour worth doing? She's talking in what about city? Ketchikan. Oh, is the duck tour worth doing in Ketchikan? We've never done the duck tour in Ketchikan, but we've done it in other places. We've done it in Boston and Seattle and Santa Barbara and yeah, other places. Yeah, yeah. It, if you've never done a ride the duck tour, absolutely do it. It's so much fun. Um, most of them have um, weatherproofing on the ducks as well, where they'll, they'll pull down some clear plastic over the windows if it's really cold, and they'll crank up some heaters to keep you warm. So definitely ride the duck. That sounds really good. Um, Mary Garza has a tip that you should take some cash to tip your tour guide on the trains as they do an excellent job. That is such a good tip. Thank you for that. You should tip everyone, right? Completely agree with you. Okay, and we've got some other folks saying that they had a morning excursion. It was done by noon and then they went back to the ship for lunch because everywhere else was so busy. Yes, why spend the money? I'm telling you, I would completely support getting back on the ship. And usually in Alaska, you are docked so close. You know, in Skagway, it might be a little bit of a hike. I would say when I'm thinking about it, you kind of have to walk down a long area, but it's not that bad, you guys. It's, you know, it's probably pretty manageable. All right, you guys, I think we're gonna wrap up here. I'm hoping that we have been able to cover everything for you all. If we have not, when the live stream ends, you can leave comments and those comments will save only after the live stream ends. We wanna thank all of you so much for taking time out of your busy Saturday to hang out with us here today. We had a blast. We hope that we've covered most of your questions. We also would like to thank our sponsor, cruiseline.com, once again for supporting Cruise Tips TV. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful remainder of your weekends. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye. Cruise are out the week. <laughs>